John chapter 16. Let me say while you're turning to John chapter 16, as a young Christian, I memorized something in every chapter in the book of John. That was one of the first things I did after I became a Christian. I memorized something in every chapter. And I believe we ought to know at least this universal gospel about the gospel that Jesus gave this man John to tell forth. It's in that great third chapter that we have for God so loved the world. And it's in the book of John you find the universal call. What a blessing. But in the 16th chapter, you find a person mentioned here, and he's not called an it or a thing. A lot of people refer to the Holy Ghost as an it, and they call him a thing. But he is a person. He's the third person of the Trinity. And I announced to you last night, night before, or at least last night, I'd be speaking to you on the most mistreated person in this church. And he's the most mistreated person in any church that I know anything about. Brother, we don't treat the Holy Ghost like we should. He's like a dove. He can be wounded. He's, he's precious. And he's kind. And thank God for the moving of the Spirit of God. Would you look at the promise that Jesus gave? And in the 16th chapter of the book of John, Beginning with verse 7, Jesus gives a promise that a person will come in his place and he would abide with us and he would do the work. Stand with me, please. Let's read the scripture. And then I'm going to get right into the message tonight. In John chapter 16, the Bible says, verse 7, Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is expedient for you that I go away. Now, let me say before I read on, they didn't want Jesus to go away. Even in the first chapter of the book of Acts, when Jesus was going away, they asked him, Lord, didn't you come to establish the kingdom of Israel? Lord, don't go away. And he said, it's not for you to know the times and the seasons. Oh, and he ascended back. Well, here he tells them it's expedient, it's necessary that I go away. For if I go not away, notice what he said. It is expedient for you that I go away, for if I go not away, the Comforter will not come unto you. But if I depart, I will send him unto you. And when he is come, I like that, brother, when he is come, I'm glad he came and he abides. Praise God. Aren't you glad for the abiding of the Holy Ghost? I'm glad he'll be with you to the end. That's what the book said. Jesus said when he comes, he'll abide with you to the very end. Now let's read on. See what he said. He will approve the world of sin. Now, brother, I want to tell you something. If you quit something because a preacher says to quit it, that is no good. But when the Holy Ghost lays his hand on you and said that's wrong, you better give it up. You better put it aside. You better not fool with it when the Holy Ghost says it's wrong. Now, let's read on. See what he says. He'll reprove the world of what? Of sin. Of sin. Now, notice, secondly, and of righteousness. He'll tell you about the righteousness of God. And the filthiness of your righteousness. He'll show you how that you stand in need. Because your righteousness, Isaiah said, filthy right. Read on, please. And of judgment. He'll convict you of judgment. He'll show the judgment before your eyes. And you know one of the things missing today in our modern preaching? Brother, people are not shown what the judgment is. And they're not afraid and they talk like there is no judgment. But the Bible said the Holy Ghost would show you. Let's read on. And then he said, of righteousness because of sin, because they believe not on me. That's verse 9. Of righteousness, because I go to my Father and you see me no more. Of judgment, because the prince of the world is judged. Now let's go back for just a moment. I'm going to show you something. Jesus said, I'm leaving. I'm going to leave you. But he said, after I'm gone, the Holy Ghost, I'll send him. And he'll come as a person. And he'll abide. But said he's going to do something. He's going to convict. And the main work of the Spirit of God is the convicting power of the Holy Ghost. Amen. You don't see much of it today. Amen. Brother Virgil and I talked to a preacher today. And he, in so many words, talked about, you don't see much conviction. 
You don't see many people running down the aisles and weeping and crying, I've got to get saved. Folks, let me say this to you. The Holy Ghost gets a hold of a man, right? He'll come running to Jesus. You hear me? I want to tell you, if he gets under Sinai conviction, bless God, he's going to seek him an altar somewhere and going to cry out to the Lord. So he said, I will send another. He came, he's here, but he's been mistreated. In a moment, I'm going to bring you that message. Would you be seated all of the house and would you bow your head? Every head bowed, every eye closed, every one praying that knows the worth of prayer. I'm going to pray and then I'm going to bring you the message in just a moment. Oh, how wonderful it is to be here tonight. Father, I pray tonight now you will speak to our hearts. And God, may the Holy Ghost uh, have his right away in everything that's said. I pray that the Spirit of God shall move. Oh, I pray that you'll not be grieved, that you'll not be quenched, that we'll not tonight our Father insult him. But I pray that we'll give right away to the moving of the Spirit of the Lord. I'm glad when he has his right away. Then our Father, you're pleased. And I pray that every word that'll be spoken will be on the anointing of the blessed Spirit of God. And then our Father, Father, I pray that you'll convict of sin through the Holy Ghost tonight. I pray people will see what sin is, what sin does, and see the future of a sinful life. I pray that Christians may see how sin can disrupt their fellowship and how sin can come between them and God. And like David of old, they can cry out for mercy. I pray that you'll speak to our hearts tonight and we'll praise you and we'll thank you because we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Beloved, I want to speak tonight on the most mistreated person that you'll find in this church. And somebody said, Preacher, people have been mistreated. I'm certainly that in this church. I, I don't go to any church that somebody hadn't been mistreated. Now, maybe it's a purpose way, or maybe it's not a purpose, but I'm sure that you'd all agree that somebody comes in this church and maybe nobody speaks to them. Maybe nobody gives them a handshake. Or maybe they're insulted. And that's an awful thing. Brother, when I go to church, I want to be friendly. I want somebody to be friendly to me. I hate to go there and them give me that old cold handshake. I hate to go to church, bless your heart, and be insulted. But I'm not preaching about a person like you and me. I want to preach tonight on the person of the Holy Spirit and how he's been mistreated, how he's been abused, how he's been insulted how that he's been lied to. Many times in the service, people lie to the blessed Spirit of God. People insult the Holy Ghost. And what a sad thing that is. But you say, preacher, what about him? You want me to give you two reasons before I give the message why I don't to mistreat the precious Holy Spirit. The first reason is because of what he's already done for me. I want to tell you, he came seeking me. And I'm glad, praise the Lord. He convicted me of my sin. I want to tell you, brother, it wasn't a preacher that convicted me. The Holy Ghost got a hold of me with the old-fashioned conviction. I got so I couldn't sleep at night. I got so I'd see the judgment. Well, I was scared to death. I want to tell you, I do not want to mistreat him because he convicted me and then he constrained me. I'm glad, praise the Lord. I wanted to be saved. I tell you, I got in such a condition that I couldn't stand it. And when a man gets in that kind of condition, brother, he'll seek a preacher. He'll be looking up somebody that can tell him how to be saved. And the third thing, he converted me. I was born of the Spirit of God. I want to tell you, it wasn't a handshake with me. It wasn't a sign card. But I'm glad that he converted me. Now the second reason why I do not want to mistreat him. It's because of what he's doing for me now. I want to tell you, I'm glad he blesses me. I'm glad tonight, bless your heart. He comforts me. I'm glad he teaches me. I'm glad he guides me. And I'm glad for what the Spirit of the Lord is doing tonight. Aren't you glad, brother, that the Holy Ghost is here in the service? And bless his wonderful name. I tell you, when he begins to move among the people of God. You can tell it, mister. Uh, there's something about his moving uh, that's blessed. Uh, but I want to give
give you some things about the Holy Ghost tonight. I want you to jot them down where you shall let it be. And I want to speak about it and then show you how that it can be mistreated. How this person can be mistreated. First, there's the birth of the Spirit. And I thank God for that. You know who heard about the birth of the Spirit first? Oh, Nicodemus, that religious fellow that met Jesus one night outside Jerusalem. I've been to the very spot where Nicodemus looked Jesus in the face and said, Aren't thou a teacher come from God? No man can do these miracles that thou doest except God be with him. And the next verse, Jesus said, Verily, I say unto ye, ye must be born again. And the next verse says, How can a man, when he's all been born the second time, can he enter into his mother's womb? And the next verse says, Verily, Verily, I say unto you, uh, except you're born of the water uh, and of the Spirit, uh, you cannot enter into the kingdom of heaven. Uh, there's two births tonight. Uh, the first one is the fleshly birth, uh, and the second one is the spiritual birth. Uh, I'm glad the first time I was born in uh, to an earthly family, uh, the second time I was born in uh, to God's family. Uh, it's a birth, brother. Uh, I'm glad for the spirit's birth. Uh, Oh, what a blessing uh, to see somebody burst uh, into the kingdom of God. Uh, you think that's a Baptist with a lot of people in. Uh, and bless God, you think water back under uh, that get a lot of people in. Uh, but I want to say to every person in this house, uh, it's the birth of the Spirit of God. Uh, I'm glad He birthed me. Uh, he mothered me into God's family. Uh, and brothers, that makes a difference tonight. Uh, aren't you glad for the birth of the Spirit in your life? Uh, oh, He blesses you uh, by giving you birth in the God's family. Uh, and I want to say this, if you get birth in, uh, you'll not run around here uh, and wonder whether you were saved or not. Uh, bless God, when I got birth in, uh, I could say, I know who I believe. Uh, and I'm persuaded uh, that he's able to keep that uh, which I've committed unto him against that day. Uh, I'm glad for the birth uh, of the Spirit of God. Uh, I read the other day for the Methodist and God help them and Baptist anybody else would say this. Uh, but the Methodist said we've got to put a campaign on uh, to persuade people uh, to come into our churches. Uh, brother, we don't know, need more people in our churches. Uh, we need more people saved. Uh, that's already in our churches. Uh, we need some people that are birthed uh, by the Spirit of God. Uh, and then I saw the other day where the Roman Catholics uh, are trying to get new men uh, to be priests and women to be nuns. Uh, and they're going to put on an attractive program. Uh, let me say to you tonight, uh, I don't believe God makes it attractive. Uh, when he calls a man to preach, uh, I'll tell you he'll do everything he can to keep away from preaching. Uh, somebody said, what are you glad, no, sir? Uh, I told the Lord, Lord, you made a mistake. Uh, you can't, Lord, you don't know who you're calling. Uh, I said, I don't look like a preacher. I don't sound like a preacher. Uh, and God said, that's all right. Uh, you turn it over to me. Uh, I'll do the rest of the uh, brother, the Spirit of God uh, brought me into the family of God. Uh, and we need some people brought in. Uh, and when they're birthed in, uh, bless God, they'll be in, uh, in Christ Jesus. Uh, there's the second thing, not only the birth of the Spirit, uh, but there's the brooding of the Spirit. Uh, and it's found over in Genesis 1 uh, when it says that the Spirit uh, moved upon the face of the waters. Uh, you can tell where God hovers uh, and broods around the place. Uh, I like to go in the church uh, where the Holy Ghost is brooding over it. Uh, I tell you, but he can't brood uh, over a bunch of people criticizing uh, and backbiting. Uh, he can't brood uh, over a people that split and fighting. Uh, he'll not do that, but when we're in unity uh, and in one accord, uh, brother, the Spirit of God will brood over his people. Uh, and what a blessing that is. Uh, about four weeks ago, I was in Ephraim Baptist Church in Ephraim, North Carolina. A few years ago, I got out of the car with Billy Kanoy, and he stopped and started weeping. And he just started weeping, and I said, what's the matter? He said, don't look up, but the trees, uh, the leaves are, 
are led up with the Spirit of God. And brother, the pastor come running out of the church, and he came running over to where we were. And he said, boys, he said, God's hovering over this ground. He said, God's hovering over this church. He said, God's hovering over every tree. And I want to tell you, we went into the house of God to have that morning fellowship. We tried to sing, nobody could sing. We tried to preach, and nobody could preach. You say, why the Spirit of God was so strong in the house of God? I want to tell you, he hovered down over that place. And Brother Billy Canoy just stood there and jumped up and down. He said, I'm sorry. I don't have anything. I can't say anything. He said, the Spirit of God is brooding over this place. And brother, I want to tell you something. When the Holy Ghost broods over you, thank God you'll know it. And you'll leave the house. What a blessing, the brooding of the Spirit of God in a service. Look what he says in Genesis 1, 2. He said, in the Spirit of God, moved, I hovered, I brooded over uh, the waters uh, in the deep, and God said, let's have the light, uh, and there was light. Uh, and what a blessing, the brooding uh, of the blessed Spirit of God. Uh, I told you this, and I don't have time to go into it, but my wife doesn't like Jamaica. I took her down there twice, and she says, I don't like Jamaica. I like it down there. I think the first time, or one of the times she, where she didn't like it, they went over to get a towel, and this a big old lizard about that long jumped out at him. And that scared her to death, and my wife didn't want this uh, down there. But Jamaica's a nice place, and I've been there, I think, 11 times, and I preached there. Uh, only trouble about preaching there is they get saved every time you go down there. I say some of nine times to myself. If I never seen such a crowd down there, they get saved every time you go down there. I, and I preached there and preached all over that island. Uh, but I never will forget that uh, while I was there one night, a little girl came down and she's crippled. And she said, Brother Mays, I want to tell you it's dangerous outside. And I, I, I'm afraid to have to go home. And I got a crippled leg and I have to drag it. But she said, while you were preaching tonight, I saw the blessed Spirit of God come down on you and hover over you while you were preaching. And she said, I don't want your Bible. And I don't want your wristwatch. And she said, I don't want your money. But I'd like to have the Spirit of God to brood over me. And that little girl knelt and I prayed with her and she got up and dragged that leg out and I followed her out and looked at her she went over the hill and she turned around and said brother Mays don't worry the spirit of God told me now let me say there's the brooding of the blessed spirit of God and he makes the difference not only is there the birth of the spirit and the brooding of the spirit but number three there's the blessing of the spirit let me tell you something when some Somebody sings, uh, and they're a blessing. You hear me tonight? Uh, they've got to sing in the power of the Holy Ghost. Uh, I don't care how you can raise your voice uh, and how high you can get. Uh, brother, that's not it. Uh, it's whether the Holy Ghost is on you or not. Uh, now, night before last, I believe it was. Yeah, night before last. A young lady got in. I mean, she had a high-pitched voice. I mean, shot it from out of sight. I don't know how to raise how high it goes, Jack, but she shot it plumb beyond that, had one of them high, uh, high soprano voices. Uh, but you know what? And I don't usually like that kind of thing. And I'm honest with you. When they shoot it so high, I can't get up there with them. But you know what happened? She shot it up there and the Holy Ghost went with her. Uh, and brother, the Spirit of God blessed her. Uh, and I want to tell you something. Uh, you talk about spiritual strawberry shortcake. Uh, for she got through, brother, with all her eating. Uh, and enjoying the blessings of that song. Uh, my Bible says in Ephesians 1, 3. Uh, Blessed be the God and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, who has blessed us uh, in our uh, heavenly places. Uh, with spiritual blessings. Uh, let me say to you, when somebody sings, uh, and if they're blessing, uh, it's the Spirit of God that's got to do the blessing. Uh, I don't care how good the choir sings, uh, if it doesn't have the Spirit of God on it, uh, he, the choir will not be a blessing. Uh, and number two, when somebody's testifying, you know, when it's good, when the Spirit of God uh, takes over that testimony. Uh, I mean, where the Spirit of God is. Uh, I saw with Brother Guy Rainwaters, and I'm not here to throw rocks at anybody in his church. But there's a little old lady from down on the islands. 
And when she got up that night, she didn't say much, but she stood there and said, I'm glad the Lord Jesus Christ found me. And she got to testifying of the grace of God, and the Holy Ghost got a hold of her. And I want to tell you, it shook everybody in each side of the church. You say, why? Did her testimony sound any greater than the rest of them? No. But it had the church and the spiritual thing. That made the difference, brother, when you get up to testify. The Spirit of God, He's the one that does the blessing. And then when a preacher's preaching, I've heard certain people say, you know, I love to hear so-and-so preach. He's a blessing. No, really, He's not. He's he, the Holy Ghost. It's the blesser, brother. When the preacher's preaching, the Holy Ghost has got to do the blessing. And if He's not there to bless, I don't care how good you preach. I don't care how ill can you can speak. And I don't care how much you know about the Bible. If it's not seasoned with the power of the Holy Ghost, brother, it's sounding bright. And it's tinkling symbol. But thank God for the blessings of the Spirit of God. And every once in a while, He'll just bless you when you're by yourself. Oh, give it for yourself. And Oh, I tell you, just nobody around, and you get to thinking about God and the blessings, and you don't have to be in 10,000 people. I'm glad, Jack, you can be over there working on one of those machines and get to thinking about where God found you and get to thinking about what God's done for you. And, brother, you have a spiritual blessing. I'm glad tonight, my friend, we have the blessings of the Spirit of God. Number four, write this down. We have the breath of the Spirit of God. Oh, what a blessing for Him to breathe upon us. I love to be around when He just breathes upon me. Holy Spirit, breathe on me. And it's a blessing when the Spirit of God breathes upon us. You say, what do you mean, preacher? The Bible said they rise, John 20. They're scared and frustrated and confused. And the Bible said they found them in the upper room. They went in there and closed the door and said, I tell you, we've got to stay here because they're going to kill us. And said, we believe that Jesus Christ is coming forth from the grave and we're afraid. And they got up there and because of fear of the Jews. Now let me say this, the persecution is going to start in, in a few days. I believe this like we've never seen it before. I, I believe there's going to be a separation between the Boy Scouts and the real soldiers. I believe there's going to be a separation between old fights and Christians, bless God, and this crowd playing church and this crowd that's not willing to get in. There are not many people that's willing to sell out and go all the way with God. But there's going to be a separation of these. They just say, preacher maze. They got in that room and they were shaking and afraid and without opening a door and without climbing in the window, the Savior, the Son of God that came out of that tomb and said, I was he that was dead, but am alive forevermore, stood up there and held up his hand. And he said, be not afraid. They looked at him and said, wait a minute. He said, a, a, a spirit uh, have not flesh and bone. Uh, they thought they saw a ghost. Uh, and the Bible said Jesus breathed upon them uh, and said, Peace unto you. Uh, I'm glad, praise God, that uh, He breathed upon them. Uh, and if He'll breathe upon you tonight, uh, you'll not be afraid. Uh, let me say, brother, when He breathes upon the church, uh, the church is made bold uh, to go out and do great exploits for God. Uh, brother, if God breathes upon His congregation tonight, we won't have to be afraid because he'll give you Holy Ghost boldness. I'm glad he breathed upon them. And they went out of that upper room and said, we've seen. And they were glad when they went down to Jerusalem. Said, I want to tell you he's alive. And the message of that day that they hated was that Jesus Christ was a living Christ. They didn't want that priest. They wanted them to preach Jesus died on the cross and left him there. But let me tell you something. I'm glad he didn't stay there. I'm glad he didn't stay in that tomb. I'm glad he stopped there tonight. Oh, thank God. I'm glad he sits at the right hand, ever living to make him a second. For you and for me. And there's the breath of the Spirit of God. I never will forget several years ago. I had a good friend. He said to me, he said, Brother Mace, he said, I want to 
Go down to the Baptist school and let them breathe on me. That's sickening to me. That's sickening to me. That's sickening. That breathe is a Baptist. You don't need Baptist. I'm a Baptist. I was a Baptist before most of you knew anything about Baptist. Well, I was a Baptist before I ever got saved. Now I'm a saved Baptist. <laughs> and I believe that the Baptists are right. If I didn't believe the Baptists are right, I'd go to the crowd I did believe right. Brother, I believe the Baptists got the truth tonight. If I didn't believe the Baptists had the truth, I'd go where they had the truth. I, I believe they got the truth tonight. But let me say to you, my friend, the Baptists need the fresh breath of God upon them tonight. We need the fresh breath of God upon our services. And when He breathes upon us, it makes a difference. This boy said to me, he said, I'm going down a little squirt a little of that Baptist juice on me. He said, wouldn't you like to have that? I said, no, sir. I want the Holy Ghost to squirt his juice all over me. I want God to breathe on me. I want the breath of God. And brother, what a blessing is the breath of the Spirit of God. Now let's come to the fifth thing quickly. There's the battle of the Spirit. You say, preacher, turn to Romans 7 when you get... Boy, you'll find a battle there between the flesh and the Spirit. Paul said, when I do good, and he wanted to do good, he said, old devil pops up or evil's there. And he said, I have trouble. There's a battle on the inside. Now, I want to tell you there are two natures. And that one nature can't sin, never will sin. But the old nature hadn't been saved. It'll not be saved until the resurrection, when it'll be changed. And praise God, we'll drop that robe of flesh to rise to meet the everlasting times. Now, I'm going to help some of you tonight. You're going to have a battle till you die. I hear somebody say, Preacher, I never have any trouble. Boy, I do. The devil whispers in my ear. Our flesh is always saying, do this. And you know, if you're not careful, you'll please the flesh. And the Bible says that we need to mortify and crucify the flesh. That the old man needs to die daily. And the Bible said, if you live after the flesh, ye shall die. But there's the battle on the inside. The battle on the inside. Now, every year I go up to a place called uh, up above Cherry Key. And I go up there in a revival meeting and in, those Indians come. And I like Indians. Boy, they're peculiar people. They'll sit there. And while I'm up at Boston City, old Bo Parish and, and some of those Indians will come. And they'll sit there and they won't smile and they won't laugh and they won't shout. Every one of them just sit there and bless God. I just look them right in the face uh, and say, y'all can sit there like wooden Indians if you want to. I'm going to shout around here. Uh, and those Indians, you know, they, they'll sit there and won't like it. I remember when Brother Eddie was singing with the inspiration. Brother Eddie is the only one of the inspirations that belongs to little old Mountain Southern Baptist Church. All the rest of the inspirations belong to Independent Baptist. And uh, Eddie got up up there and held up his little baby one Sunday afternoon in the rally service and said, look at this baby. Maybe he'll be a preacher. And old Tom Harris jumped up and said, yeah, an independent Baptist preacher. And I was a preaching away that day in a three rows of Indians sitting over there. Man, they're sitting there looking at me. And I said, somebody up in Boston said, he said, ladies, are you independent? I, I said, I'm so independent. <laughs> I said, if I was the Lone Ranger, I wouldn't let one of those Indians right there ride with me. And boy, they found that. And every one of them looked like sitting bulls over there. And we, I got in the car and Doc said, Jim, you just didn't like what you said. I said, that's all right, bless God. God didn't call me to preach where Indians like it. Jim Powell's a Jew. He said, preach. And brother, we better quit worrying about who likes it and who doesn't like it. But boy, those Indians have been my friends. I always get my hair cut, by the way. We didn't get one this week. I always get one in Shell Howard. Three of them in, the song leader, and two of them in run the barbershop there. And I go in there. But when I'm up at Cherokee, I go down to the Crow Barbershop. And if you ever go to uh, Cherokee next time, go in there. Just the one barbershop. And tell old Crow. Say, Crow, how you doing? And he'll tell him and say, I'm a good friend of Brother Mays. I knew it was the first time he came to hear me preach several years ago. He sat on the front row. And brother, I shot that evening with every bit of the gospel I had. I mean, I went right down on old Crow. And the next day I went down and Tom said, well, it would make him feel good if you let him cut your hair. And I went in. That native barber shot that evening and said, and he said, get up in the chair. And I said, all right, Mr. Crow. 
And I sat down, and boy, he took that old big razor and that night. <laughs> and I turned around, and I said, Crow, are you going to scalp me? He said, I might. He said, you skipped me last night. You turned around. Bless God. I said, I'm going to scalp you now. And what a time I had just talking to that Indian. He loves God. My wife and I was up there. We ran into him, and we took him in a little fish place of Long John Silvers, and I ate with him, and he talked about the blessings of serving the Lord Jesus. I, oh, you say, preacher, that those Indians up there in Cherokee and Indians, where will you find them uh, when they really get saved? Uh, you say they'll sell out to God. Uh, oh, Brother Guy Rainwater said not many of the Indians get saved, uh, but when they really get saved, uh, he said they'll love the Lord. I said not many of us Gentiles get saved, uh, but when we get saved, we'll really serve God. Uh, tell me, brother. But when you get saved, you'll serve the Lord. Years ago, there's a missionary who went a hundred years ago up in Cherokee, led the, led the chief to God. And he said he came back, and both parents said, about six months later, he went back through and said to the chief, how you getting along since you got saved? And said the old chief said, mm, mm. He said, I said, how you getting saved? I get along since you got saved six months ago. He said, mm, mm. And the missionary said, I said, how you... Get along, he said, two dogs. Right here. In my right here in my house. Said they are biting and fighting. All the time. Said they're two dogs right here. And said they just are fighting. And the missionary said, Which one wins? He said, the one I say seek him to. Said, he's the one that wins. Uh, you see, he's talking about those two natures. Uh, he's talking about the spirit. Uh, and he's talking about the flesh. Uh, and brother, there's a battle uh, between the flesh and the spirit. Sir, uh, and we need to recognize that. Now, number six. Uh, oh, this is the blessed filling of the spirit. Uh, I'm glad I've been filled with the spirit of God. Uh, now, it doesn't mean a second work. Uh, it doesn't mean a third work. Uh, man asked me one time, said, if you had the second Bless him. I said, well, let's see. I've had the millionth and the second million. I guess I've got the second one somewhere back there. I, I'm glad, brother. The Bible said, be not drunk with wine. Where in itself, but be ye filled with the Spirit. Yeah. And we need to be filled with the Spirit of God. What a blessing it is to be filled with God's Spirit tonight. I'm glad one day after I got saved, I said, Lord, I want you to fill me. Jesus talked about you shall receive power uh, after the Holy Ghost has come upon you, and you shall be my witnesses. Uh, and you can't witness uh, unless you're filled with the Spirit of God. And brother, God filled me with the blessed Spirit of God. And what a blessing it is to be filled with the Spirit. Uh, what a blessing it is to say, uh, I know that I've been filled with the Spirit of God. Now, a lot of people don't know what you're talking about when you talk about being filled with the Spirit. One old lady got up over in South Carolina one time, and she said, I'm filled with the Spirit. And he was running out the corner of her mouth. Stuff was, and they said, well, it's something she's filled with something. She was the world. I was over in Alabama one time at Gadsden. I was pretty close to you over there. I was at Gadsden. Boy, and I was just preaching. After I got through preaching, a woman came down. She had a mouth full of stuff, and she said, Brother Jackson, is it a sin for me to do it? And she blew it on me. I said, you're going to blow it on me, it is, sister. That's sir. I want to say this to you tonight. We're not to be filled with the things of the earth. Brother, we're to be filled with the Spirit of God. We're to have clean vessels. We're to be filled with the Spirit. And what a blessing to have the blessed filling of God's Spirit. But here's the last thing. That's the black thing. Oh, the Bible said in two places, uh, in Mark 3 and Matthew 12, uh, he said, if you blaspheme the Holy Ghost, uh, there have no forgiveness in this world. Uh, of the world to come, I've seen people walk out of a service, uh, and I believe they blaspheme the Spirit of God. Uh, several years ago, my wife and I was coming back from Simpsonville, South Carolina, and I said, God, I believe that's Marcus. I believe that's Marcus going in there. And oh, he's a Jew. And Marcus, I remember when I, I talked to him about his soul in Columbia, South Carolina. He looked in the face and he said, the reason Jesus turned the water into wine was to get drunk. And he said to me, he said, the reason Jesus saved the woman so well. He wanted to marry that woman and all such blasphemy. But I remember one time I walked in the office and I said, Marcus, I said, I want to ask you something. I said, do you know God in Christ? I said, you're a Jew. Have you accepted Jesus? And he said, no. He said, I know where your church is. I go number one highway. I said, you ever stop there, Marcus? He said, yeah. 
I stopped there going up to the beach every Sunday afternoon. Pull off over there on the number one highway in your parking lot and take a drink of liquor. And boy, you've never heard a man talk like him in your life. And one day, I came to the office at Columbia Records, and I said, Marcus, I want to talk to you about your soul. And I saw the Spirit of God begin to work on him, and he started to quiver. And I thought, my, if he don't get right with God, he's going to cross over God's deadline. He's going to blaspheme the Holy Ghost. And there will be no forgiveness in this world, neither in the world to come. And that night, my wife and I stopped in that little place up there in South Carolina. We saw Marcus, and he ran. He threw up his hand, and he ran. He used to be my friend, but he won't get around me. I believe this, that a man can cross over that deadline. I believe he can blaspheme the Holy Ghost. And if you're here tonight, and God's dealing with you. And if you believe the service, if you blaspheme the Spirit, there will be no forgiveness in this world, neither in the world to come. Oh, how sad it is when people leave out and blaspheme the blessed Spirit of God. I was in a meeting the other day at Mount Calvary. And I had a good, a good preacher friend to come up from where I'd just been in a revival meeting, Brother Alvin Clinton. And he said, you remember a certain girl used to go to Jackson Creek where you think? I said, yeah. He said, well, she's an old what lady now. He said, babe. He said, I walked in the other day and I was talking to someone else in the grocery store and I saw her. And I talked to her about the Lord and said she got real nervous and said, Brother May, she went out there screaming. And he said, the man that was standing behind me said she's blasphemed the Holy Ghost. I mean, she's blasphemed the Holy Ghost. Let me tell you something. It's dangerous business when men feel the moving and the wooing of the Holy Ghost and the glad of the service and blaspheme his blessed name. Every head by the eye closed. Oh, what a sad thing it is. Blaspheme against the Holy Ghost. 